I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. And a huge shout out to my new channel members and Patreon supporters, Jet Simon, Basic Terror, Enmark Games, Zan, Fuzel CC, James Welch, Rob, Olivia Bernier, Tor Alexanderson, Matt, Fan Van, Amari Lewis, Seth Goble, and Retro Galaxy. Hey guys, welcome back to the Flappy Bird tutorial series. Uh, this is the second time of recording this tutorial because I just did the whole thing and I forgot to hit record on the recording software so here we are again you you obviously don't know that because you weren't around for the first one but here we go for the second time let's create the next section of this tutorial and in this episode we are going to be adding some ui elements some hud elements that are going to track our score so first of all we need a layer to put that on so go over to the layers right click insert layer above call it ui for user interface and I'm going to set this layer global so I have access to it across all layers in the game don't need to check it locked so on the UI layer double click let's add a text box I'm going to pop that in the top middle and I'm going to center justify it on the horizontal and the vertical alignment and I'm going to change the font to something a little nicer to look at and I'm going to leave everything else the same, except I'm going to change the name of it to txt underscore score. And that's going to display my score throughout the game while I'm playing. So let's go back to the event sheet and let's create another group. And we're going to call this one scoring. And then, in fact, I'm going to close these other ones down. This event here, every tick, that can move up to the top. Underscoring, I'm going to say system, and I'm going to say every tick, and I'm going to add an action and say text score. I'm going to set the text. Just leave it blank for now. We're going to right click down here, add a global variable that's going to control the score. I'm going to call that one score. It's going to be a number. This is now going to control how many pipes we pass through. And I'm going to set this text, every tick, to say exactly what this global variable says so every time we add to that global variable it will automatically display it in here it doesn't matter what the initial text is you can set that to zero if you want to it really doesn't matter it's now going to it's always now going to display exactly what that global variable is now we need a way for us to clock up score now the easiest way to do that is add an event and go to pipes and we're going to compare their x positions so where they are on the horizontal alignment and i'm going to say if they're less than minus 32. so if we go back to the layout remember this line here is zero so minus 32 is going to be somewhere in this range here so as soon as the pipes get into this range that's when we're going to add the score which means we've gone through the pipe they've hit this range here and now we can add to the score so let's go ahead and add an action and say system add to score one we also going to want to destroy the pipe because otherwise they're just going to continue on forever and ever and ever and the game will always be tracking them no matter where they are and if we have lots and lots of pipes spawning in and we do very very well then there's going to be lots of pipes in the game which could affect performance but now we're taking care of that by saying pipes destroy so now if we play the game once we travel through one of the pipes oh Trust me to die on the first one. But you can see it ticked over there and it clocked up that score. Let's just try again. There. So we've got one. And then I hit that one. But it clocked up two because it wasn't there. So we're going to need to fix that. Because if we die and hit something here, the pipe's still going to move across. Hit that area that we've set it to this condition here. And it's still going to add one to the score. So we need a way now to track to see whether or not we can add to the score. And the way I'm going to do that is with a game over variable. So add another global variable. I'm going to call it game over i'm going to i'm going to give i'm going to make it a boolean i'm going to initially set it to true because when the game starts i want to be able to dictate when the gameplay starts and if i set game over true at the start of the layout then i can tell the system exactly when whether that's after a three second countdown or whatever the case may be um, now i'm going to go right click and i'm going to add another group and i'm going to call this one set up which is all the events i want to do at the beginning of the game Oh, 
put that at the top. <clears throat> in fact, these events here can go in a group as well. Let's right click that. I'm going to call those player controls. And I'm going to just click and drag these down into that group so it's all nice and tidy. Now on setup, I'm going to add an event. I'm going to say system and I'm going to say on start of layout. On start of layout, I'm going to just turn that Boolean variable true for now. It's not going to happen immediately once we get into the nuts and bolts of the game. But for now, I'm going to set game over false immediately when we start. So it's going to start true, immediately go false. And now I can add a condition in here. If I just select that little section of the block and push C on the keyboard, I can now system and I can check to see if that game over the Boolean is true. So if I push I on the keyboard with it, with it selected, it becomes inverted. Now this statement says if the pipes travel to the left of the screen more than minus 32 pixels and we're not in game over, then we can add one to the score. Otherwise, it's, otherwise it's not going to add one to the score. Now I'm going to go back to my collisions and I'm going to say player on collision with pipes. And I'm going to go system and I'm going to set Boolean game over to true. So now immediately when we hit a pipe, we're going to set game over true so this will no longer be relevant but what i'm also going to do is make a sub event and drag that game over down into it and drag the scoring into that sub event because i always want to destroy the pipes because i don't want them to go on forever so the pipes will always be destroyed but only if we're game over is false we're going to add one to the score now let's go back to the layout Come over here on the left where it says project properties view and change the full screen quality to high and that's going to change the quality of that text and now when i play i should be able to score as long as i'm alive one but then if i get hit nothing happened no no score is added which is perfect so that's the scoring element of the game done we've got it set to a boolean that only clocks up the score if the game over is false. So now let's add in another variable, which is gonna track our high score. So right click, add a global variable, and I'm gonna call this one high score, and it's also going to be a number. Now we need some text on the UI layout, uh, layer, so double click, add some text. I'm gonna call this one txt underscore high score I'm going to change the font to the same one that I had for the other one and I'm going to set the horizontal alignment center and that one also center now initially I want to set this text invisible because I don't want to be showing them the high score until they've actually died. So I'm going to go ahead on the left hand side here under properties and uncheck that box that says initially visible. I'm going to change the placeholder text to say high score so I know exactly what it is I'm looking at. I'm just going to make sure that they're aligned with each other perfect so this one's now going to always display the high score so we're going to go back into scoring and under every tick that same condition that we created earlier that same um, event add an action i'm going to say text high score and i'm going to say set text and i'm going to change this now to the global variable high score now this is where we need to start adding in some events that detect whether or not our current score is greater than our high score. And if our current score is greater than our high score, then we can reset the high score to our current score. And we're going to do that under uh, the collision, so when we die. So I'm going to go ahead and create another function. Uh, I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a function. And I'm going to call this one the game over function. And I want this one to be called when we die, so when we collide. So when we call fader black, after that, I'm going to go function. I'm going to call game over, but I'm going to do a five second wait for the screen to go to black, and then we're going to call it. And the game over function is going to control all of that updating of the high score and showing the, the UI layout text. So let's first of all go add action, and we're going to say text high score and we're going to set it visible so we can see it. Then I'm going to create a sub event and we're going to run a check. 
So we're going to go system and we're going to compare two values because we've got two values. We've got the current score and we've got the high score. So the first value is going to be score, which is that global variable there. And then we're going to say is greater than or equal to. And then we're going to type in high score in the second value. So effectively, all we've said, if the score is higher or equal to the high score, then we need to do something. And that thing we're going to do is add an action. I'm going to go system and we're going to set the value of high score to score. So now we're going to go through this pipe. We've got a score of one. So now if I die, you can see the high score popped in as one. So our current score is one and our high score is also one. So now let's, if I reset it, I don't think it's going to save. Let's just double check that. We're going to need to add in local storage, I think. We've got one. Let's see if I can get a oh, two. I should have got a lower score, really. Let's die there for two. It's going to say high score is two. Now, if I go in and get a zero, it's going to say score is, is zero. That's fine. Yeah. So we need to add in some local storage. So let's go back to, so let's go back to layout one, double click. Let's add in local storage so we can now start saving these variables um, that we're creating. So on the game over function, this is when we're going to start saving the scores. So when we call game over, we're going to add an action and we're going to go local storage and we're going to set an item. The key is basically just a reference. It can be absolutely anything you want. It doesn't have to be anything in particular. It's just something that you're going to remember when you reference it later on. So what we want to do first is we want to set our high score to, to local storage. So the system will remember what the high score is. So we're going to say high score and the value is going to be that high score variable so this is exactly what we're referencing and it's always good to put in the key is something similar to what it is so you remember exactly what it is so when we die we're going to set the high score variable to uh, we're going to assign that sorry that key to the high score variable and we're going to set it but i think i'm going to run that after we've updated the high score Now, when we go back to our setup group on start layout, we need to check to see if a previous high score exists. And if it does exist, then we need to set it where we want it. So we're going to add an action and we're going to go local storage and we're going to see if there's a previous high score in the game. So we're going to say check item exists and that item is going to be high score exactly how we've written it in the previous key. And now we're going to add an event and we're going to go local storage and we're going to say on item exists so if that item does exist and again we need to just rename it or not rename it but name it or reference it exactly as we've named it before so the exact same spellings so on high score item exists now we need to add an action and this is all very straightforward we need to now get it so we're literally telling the system step by step what we're doing so we're going to go ahead and get that high score and now once we've got it we need to set it somewhere. So we're going to add another action. I'm going to say local storage on item get. And that's going to be again, high score. And again, this is very, very step by step on item get add an action. And we're going to say system. And now we need to set it. So we're going to go set value and we're going to set that global variable high score to the local storage that we've just got. So we start typing in local, it'll come up local storage dot item value. So now we're going to set this high score box when the game starts to the previous high score, which will be saved here at the end of the game, which is this one here. So let's give it a try. So let's try and get a high score of one. There we go. We got one. Now let's die. The high score is going to show up as one. Now if I reset the game and I score zero, it's 
our previous high score pops up as one. Now let's try and beat the high score. If I can, it's a pretty hard game. One, just need a two now. There it is, two. Now I can die. And our new high score sets as two. We're going to leave it there for today, guys. If you're enjoying the series, if you're learning some new stuff, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. It gets the video out to more people. We're going to continue making this in the next episode. And like I said at the beginning of the series, we're going to take it all the way through to the point where we upload it to the Google Play Store and hopefully add some adverts and make some money from the game. So uh, thanks for following along if you made it this far. And I'll see you in the next episode.